Okay, so uh, good afternoon everyone, or in the case of uh, Mate, uh, good evening, and welcome to Bengi Egun's uh, PhD dissertation defense. Uh, so as you know, uh, part of the requirement of every PhD student in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering here at WPI is to, uh, there are three stages. There is a diagnostic exam, there is a PhD proposal defense, and then there is finally the dissertation exam that uh, the, the candidate, in this case, uh, Ms. Agun, needs to defend her dissertation research that was conducted over the last several years. So Bengi started here uh, in January of 2013. Uh, she arrived in the US, I think it was January 5th, 2013, which is the same day I got married, that's why I know that date so well. Uh, since then, she's been a prolific researcher. She's been supported uh, over the last several years, almost all the time, by a scholarship given to exceptional students by the minist uh, Turkish Ministry of Education. Um, she has published prolifically, has a patent, has done two interns, uh, one at NEC Labs in Heidelberg, Germany, as, as well as one recently at Toyota Info Technology Center in Silicon Valley, California, USA. Um, on her committee, uh, Bengi has, um, of myself, Alex Wiglinski, I'm her PhD dissertation advisor, uh, Casey Kirby Patel from the University of Massachusetts, Boston, uh, Mate Boban, uh, who is currently at Huawei Research in uh, Germany, but used to be at NEC Lab, um, Bengi's uh, advisor at, uh, at NEC Lab in Heidelberg, and Professor Li Feng Lei from WPI Electrical Engineering. Thank you, uh, committee, for uh, serving on this important role. Uh, the way the dissertation defense shall be conducted, uh, at least the Wiglinski style anyway, and to be fair, this is like I have to apply it to everyone, is first of all, there will be a presentation uh, given by the candidate that summarizes her research uh, accomplishments over the last several years. So try doing it in 30 minutes and com combine three and a half years worth of work. Kind of difficult, but I think Bengi can definitely do it. Um, during that presentation, there shouldn't be any questions asked unless it's like absolutely necessary. Uh, at the end, then the floor is open to ask any questions about the material that they saw, including the committee members. Then I'll ask the um, audience, except for the committee members, to leave the room. It will be then a closed door session with Jess Bengi and her committee. Then after that, the candidate will step out and then the committee will dis uh, discuss any sort of actions uh, that need to be done in order to further enhance the work, like any missing like omissions of, like uh, let's say, concepts, insights, material, additional simulation results, and then the decision is uh, uh, provided to the candidate. So uh, with that, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's also a great summer for me as the advisor. Um, this has been a wonderful summer in terms of like Bengi's defending her uh, PhD dissertation. Uh, there's later this week, there's a, uh, the Connected and Autonomous Vehicle Summer School that's being hosted here at WPI and co-organizing. Uh, three of my PhD or former PhD students are getting married this summer. It's been like a slam dunk uh, summer so far. So, and this is one of those high points uh, of that. So without further ado, I would like, to, first of all, to, uh, uh, you know, let's uh, give our um, a candidate uh, a good luck and a round of applause before she starts. So, thank you. Hi, um, welcome to my PhD defense. Thank you very much for being here. And especially thank you to my committee members, Professor Li Fengli, uh, Professor Casey Kirby Patel, and Dr. Mate Boban. Uh, my PhD dissertation is about distributed adaptation techniques for connected vehicles. Um, First, I would like to give a brief info about my PhD study. I have a scholarship from Turkish government. I started on January 2013. I passed my diagnostic exam on August 2013. This is equivalent to qualification exam in other universities. And until my area exam on May 2015, we mostly focused on producing conference papers. And on the summer of 2014, I did a research internship in Germany under the supervision of Mate, and we filed a patent there. Um, after my area exam, we mostly focused on producing um, journal papers. Last winter, I did another research internship in, uh, at Toyota Infotech Center in California. And here we are today for my dissertation defense. On slide three, 
Uh, first, I will explain the motivation behind this research. And then I'm going to explain three major contributions of my dissertation. And I will conclude my talk and take the questions. So, um, slide five. Um, connected vehicles aim to increase the traffic safety as well as the uh, environment awareness. Uh, communication links are more robust than alternative solutions. Also, hardware cost is less than the equivalent sensor system. NHTSA highlighted 82% of current traffic accidents can be prevented by using connected vehicles. Also, Boston Consulted Group reported that connected vehicles can decrease $40 billion cost caused by traffic accidents, traffic jams, and the um, produce of carbon dioxide emissions. Because of those benefits, NHTSA put the target flag that by 2019, every vehicle will get connected. Um, we, slide five. We have two main applications. First one is safety applications. Uh, for example, intersection management and lane changing assistant. And second one is mobility applications. For example, smart navigation systems and tolling management systems. Due to the uh, transmitter and receiver objects, we have different communication names like vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infra infrastructure, vehicle to pedestrian, so on and so forth. Um, their general characteristics are same, but their parameter sets can be different. Besides the benefits of connected vehicle, it's also a very challenging system. The major challenges, environmental uh, characteristics are very dynamic. Due to the obstacles around, we have multi-path fading and diverse interference effect. Vehicles share information by periodically broadcasting the beacon messages. And this periodical broadcasting causes uh, message overhead. And we have limited resources to support all systems. Human errors make the system hard to predict. And lastly, each application has their own unique system requirement. And we, we are supposed to satisfy all those requirements. Slide six. So to deal with these challenges, in this dissertation we propose practical decision and adaptation techniques for reliable connected vehicles communication. And we have three major contributions. First contribution is about modeling the multi-hub channels. And we propose selective message relaying algorithm to make the relaying operation more efficient. In the second contribution, we propose a distributed congestion control algorithm, uh, which is environment and context aware combined power and rate adaptation. And in the third contribution, we propose cooperative spectrum sensing and channel switching decision mechanism for dynamic spectrum access approach. Um, on slide 10, we see the publications that we produced from this dissertation. Uh, we have one patent, six journal papers. One of them is already published. Five of them are still under review. Uh, five conference papers. Four of them are already published. One of them will be submitted on August. So, um, in the first contribution, we worked on channel models to understand the system behavior, and we proposed a relaying optimization. Uh, we both work on channel large-scale fading models and small-scale fading models. For large-scale fading models, we focused on vehicle-to-infrastructure systems. And for small-scale fading models, uh, there are many works on point-to-point -point communications or amplify and forward relaying systems. Alternative to those, we worked on decode and forward relaying systems. And for relaying optimization, there are some works on packet-based relaying decision. However, we worked on cluster-based relaying decision mechanism, uh, which is faster. Slide 13. So for large-scale fading models, we worked on different link models, uh, link types. 
and we find the mathematical models for attenuation characteristics of each link type and we compare the mathematical model with the uh, real-world measurement data to see the results are matching. So for line-of-sight links, attenuation has regular two-range ground reflection model if the distance between transmitter and receiver large enough. Um, but more interestingly, we worked on uh, the additional attenuation uh, caused by the ob obstacle on the link. So if the obstacle is another vehicle, we have uh, additional attenuation has knife edge model due to the obstacle. And if the obstacle is a building, uh, additional attenuation has log distance path loss model with a large path loss exponent. And lastly, if there is a foliage between transmitter and receiver, we have 2.3 dB additional attenuation uh, per meter of foliage. So this was the uh, large-scale fading study, and then we worked on small-scale fading models on multi-hub uh, connected vehicles on slide 14. Research interest here is to find the channel res uh, impulse responses here. We have two models, geometrical model and some of sinusoids model. Both model takes each scatterer as one path and sum up those multi paths to find the final channel value. But the difference is, geometrical model assumes we exactly know the number of scatterers and the location of scatterers. And it computes the uh, channel value by using the geometrical parameters of this given information. Especially such a dynamic environment, this assumption may not be practical. Alternative to that, we have some of Sinusoid's model. It assigns the location of scatterers statistically. Uh, and also it considers the time delay between multipaths. These features make some of Sinusoid's model uh, more practical and more accurate. On slide 15, uh, once we see the benefits of relaying operation, we wonder how can we make the relaying operation more efficient. So the problem with the relaying operation is this relay vehicle receives the broadcast messages and then rebroadcast all of them. This causes a large number of messaging and also message delays, even more packet losses. But the good news is, uh, most of the messages received by relay vehicle includes the redundant information. So we say if we can detect the redundant information, we can rebroadcast only the unique ones and we can still provide the same environmental awareness by rebroadcasting less number of messages. To do that, uh, we propose the message clustering technique. So we used hierarchical clustering uh, because it's good at uh, adapting itself any um, any different message sets and also in the, it's independent from any initial assumption or condition. Uh, we use three types of feature of the message to find the redundant information. First one is message type, which is about uh, the message's safety urgent message or non-urgent maybe infotainment message. And second one is temporal feature, which is about the time the message is created. And the third feature is special feature, which is about the location the message is created. Slide 17. Um, so for the experiments, first we need an experiment region. OpenStreetMap lets us uh, select a region on Google Earth map and download the most updated Google Earth file. And we, put, uh, we give this file as an input to Sumo. Sumo creates a random vehicle traffic for a given uh, map information. And now we implemented our proposed algorithms on GME Toolbox. GME Toolbox is a bunch of MATLAB functions. Actually, Mate created that. Uh, for a given experiment region and um, vehicle traffic, so, uh, GME computes any kind of propagation features by considering connected vehicle standards. 
So results shows that some of sinusoid model has higher channel capacity than uh, geometrical model. This is mostly because uh, it considers the time delay between multipads. And also multi-hopping communication has higher uh, channel capacity than point-to-point -point communication. Slide 19. However, there is a trade-off on multi-hopping communication. So multi-hopping make the propagation distances shorter. So uh, propagation error decreases. However, uh, each hop performs decoding operation and this causes decoding error. So we ask up to how many hopping, multi-hopping communication is still more beneficial than point-to-point -point communication. And to answer that, we uh, use beta rate as a performance matrix. Um, results shows that for low-speed vehicles, up to eight hopping, multi-hopping still has less beta rate than point-to-point uh, -point communication. And for high-speed vehicles, up to six hopping, multi-hopping is still more beneficial. Uh, hello, Mati, are you with us? I'm back. Okay. Yep. Okay, thanks. Where did you lose us? I, I, I dropped out five seconds ago, so... Okay, okay. awesome, awesome. So we are on slide 20. Okay. For selective message relaying, we compare no selection case and existing solution from literature which is called packet value cast and proposed algorithm. And the results here shows that the proposed algorithm provides the same environment awareness by rebroadcasting less number of messages. And here we see the processing delay performance. Um, Queuing Taylor says that if the number of messages in the buffer increase linearly, um, the processing delay increase exponentially. So we see this effect on yellow bars. For the green bars, um, packet value cast decides whether the packet should be rebroadcast or not, packet by packet. Therefore, its performance about processing delay is even worse than the uh, no selection case. On the other hand, the proposed algorithm keeps the processing delay between 1 millisecond to 4 milliseconds, which is less than channel coherence time. So this was the first contribution. Uh, we worked on channel models to uh, see the system behavior and we proposed a selective message relaying algorithm. And we worked on multi-hopping communication in the first contribution. But in second and third contributions, uh, we worked on the cooperation with the one-hop direct neighbors. And in the second contribution, uh, we proposed distributed cooperative congestion control algorithm which satisfies the target environment rate uh, and um, target application requirements. Slide 22. Uh, what I mean with environment awareness is, let's say this red vehicle X wants to be aware of all vehicles around the intersection. Uh, so its target awareness range will be this blue dashed line. But because of the obstacles around, it can communicate only with the vehicles in, within this red dashed line. So research question here is, how can we achieve this target awareness range? What about context awareness? Um, let's say vehicle Y is using an application that needs a short awareness range. For example, brake status information. And Vehicle Z is using another application that needs a wider awareness range. For example, road condition information or traffic jam warning. So research question here is, how can we achieve these various application requirements? To answer those questions, in the literature there are many works on only transmit power adaptation, only message rate adaptation or combined adaptation techniques. As a novelty to the literature, we propose environment and context aware uh, combined power and rate adaptation algorithm. And our proposed algorithm proactively 
considers the effects of each adaptation on the other one. Slide 24. For power adaptation, uh, the vehicle first computes the current pet loss exponent with the corresponding neighbor i. And then it uses this current pet loss exponent value to find the next transmit power value with the corresponding neighbor to achieve the target awareness distance. And then it does it for all neighbors and it picks the minimum power value that achieves the target awareness rate. For rate adaptation, we used an algorithm from literature which is called Limerick. Uh, it is proposed by Toyota researchers. Limerick considers the channel usage limitations and the current message rate to find the next message rate value. Slide 26. So far, we performed the power adaptation and rate adaptation separately. To combine them, we propose a fuzzy logic lookup table that proactively considers the effects of power adaptation on rate adaptation or vice versa. Um, for the results, we again implemented our proposed algorithm on GME toolbox and we compare no adaptation, only power, only rate, and proposed eCPR adaptations. On 27, slide 27, we see the performances for awareness and interference. Results shows that um, only power adaptation and proposed eCPR adaptation provides higher awareness than the other cases while keeping the interference almost the same. So, okay, we can think only power adaptation is as good as proposed eCPR. So why do we need eCPR? Because only power adaptation does not consider any channel usage limitation. Here we see um, only power adaptation exceeds the channel usage limits while the others are keeping it around the threshold. And lastly, here we see the results for number of vehicles that achieves the target message rate. And proposed eCPR has much more higher performance than only rate adaptation. So this was the second contribution. We proposed a distributed congestion control algorithm, which is combined power and rate adaptation. Um, in the third contribution, we propose distributed cooperative dynamic spectrum access technique. So, okay, FCC dedicated six channels for connected vehicles. However, these six channels will not be enough once all vehicles get connected. So, is the solution to that is to use a digital television bat as a secondary user when the main primary user is not using it. This approach requires uh, to detect the channel available to very accurately. However, the vehicle can detect the channel available to wrong. So the solution to that is we can provide a cooperative decision mechanism with the help of neighbor vehicles. But this time neighbor vehicle also may detect the channel available to wrong. So we say we can define the chain, uh, we can consider the neighbor's credibilities. So research questions here are um, how do we define the neighbor's credibility accurately? And also, once we access the channel, how do we decide we should keep staying in the same channel or we should switch to a better quality channel, although it's switching cost? Um, slide 31st. So, in the literature, individual sensing is made by minimizing false detection error. However, for an accurate sensing, uh, we need to consider not only false detection error, but also misdetection error. So we propose the Bayesian approach for that. And for cooperative sensing, there are many works on centralized DSA techniques. However, um, they have another drawbacks like message congestion or message relay in the uh, message delay in the um, central system. 
Therefore, we worked on distributed cooperative DSA and we proposed robust entropy-based weighted voting algorithm and also for switching decision, uh, it is made by genetic algorithms in the literature, but genetic algorithms converges to the decision very slow. So we proposed Bumblebee-inspired fast decision mechanism. To do that, um, we first find the optimum energy detection threshold uh, that gives the minimum probability of incorrect detection. And probability of incorrect detection depends on both probability of false detection and probability of misdetection. To solve this optimization problem, uh, we use a fast numerical method, which is called second method. So second method does not include any derivative operation. That's why it is faster than the other numerical method. So once we find the adaptive energy threshold, um, we decided the channel status. And each vehicle broadcasts the available channel list and also probability of incorrect detection value. At the same time, each vehicle receives these information from its neighbors. Um, slide 34. Um, to, to decide the neighbors' credibilities, we, we used entropy from the information theory. So entropy defines the uncertainty of the information. So we decide, we define the credibility of neighbors as 1 minus entropy. I mean, normalize it to decide the weights of neighbors. So by using these uh, weights of neighbors, we vote the available channels and we access to the available channel with the highest vote. For channel switching decision, uh, we inspired from the nature, from the bumblebees. So bumblebees foraging behavior deals with exactly the same problem with the um, connected vehicles. A bumblebee decides whether it should stay in the same flower or it should fly to the, another flower with a higher nectar level, although it will spend energy to fly there. So this decision mechanism is based on benefit over cost rate. So basically we compute the um, benefit over cost rate of current channel and the average benefit over cost rate of the other channels and we compare it to decide, whether, uh, decide switch or stay. For the results we again implemented our proposed mechanism to um, DMV toolbox and uh, for individual sensing uh, the proposed mechanism decreases the detection error by 20%. And the process time of proposed mechanism is around one millisecond, which is less than channel coherence time. And here we see the results for cooperative sensing. Uh, proposed entropy-based weighted voting uh, converges the detection error to zero. So this was very general idea of my PhD study. One last time, the contributions to the current state of the art are uh, in the first contribution, we explored the channel models for multi-hub connected vehicles and we proposed a selective message relaying algorithm that makes the relaying operation more efficient. And in the second contribution, we proposed a distributed congestion control algorithm which is combined power and rate adaptation. In the third contribution, we proposed a distributed cooperative dynamic spectrum access technique. For the future works, um, okay, so far I worked on purely connected vehicles. From now on, I want to work on how to combine connected vehicles with the other systems, for example, sensor system of the vehicle or cellular system. And another practical consideration would be how to bridge the SRC standard with the other standards. The timeline again for my future plans. Uh, I have another research internship at Nokia Bell Labs 
uh, beginning from September. During my internship, I want to check some job options either in Europe or in the USA. Uh, or I will go back to Turkey to be a assistant professor in a state university. This is the payback of my scholarship. On the other hand, I want to get more active role in vehicular technology society. Uh, right now, I'm the chair of young professional uh, young professionals in BTS board of governors. So I want to move on from there. Thank you very much for listening. Any questions? Thank you.